Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to my channel. I found us a uh, slightly more interesting background plate to shoot with. We have some catamarans. So, uh, it's that time of year again. We're doing the boats that I shot at the Miami International Boat Show. Uh, there were many. Some of them are older, some of them are newer, some of them are just downright interesting. Uh, it's just kind of a mix of uh, whatever I think is cool and whatever I think is noteworthy. So, so this week we're starting off with the Royal Cape 570 Majestic Flybridge Edition. Uh, like most boats at the show, this boat is not for sale. It's our private owner boats. But unlike most boats at the show, you can buy an example of this one used on the brokerage market right now. I'll have the full info uh, down in the description for you to check out. The boat is called Bare Feet Retreat. It's a slightly different layout, of course. This boat is uh, that boat is a charter layout, and this boat was built more, you know, for an owner. But yeah, hypothetically, if you didn't want to buy one of these right now, uh, you could definitely do it. As usual, I'll have the full spec sheet for that boat down in the description. If you're interested in that catamaran or any other, uh, feel free to drop me a line. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the tour. All right, we're here back at Miami looking at the Royal Cape Catamarans Majestic 570 Flybridge Edition. Uh, this boat is a custom, uh, well, semi-custom job that has been a lot of interesting additions by the owner. And yes, it is a big one. This boat is huge. Uh, so, first if you look at the swim platform, you'll notice that it is actually uh, cambered in such a way that the builder actually made it bigger at the owner's requests. Your dinghy chocks go there and the uh, table is removable, but you know, uh, when you want to have happy hour, just set up your chairs out here and there's your beach club. We go on board. Notice on the Royal Cape, you have the sugar scoops go quite low. This is how the boat is designed. It's intended to facilitate easy access in and out of the water. We'll start with one of the more interesting uh, features on this boat, which is that it is actually not sail drive. It is shaft drive. In fact, it is... Sorry, hold on. The owner is gonna help me out here. It's too difficult to do this one-handed as I've sadly learned. Thank you very much, sir. It's Yanmar and it is actually V-Drive because guess what? They don't make sail drives big enough to accommodate this uh, horsepower level. And the boat does have separate mechanical spaces, so. You've got a Kohler generator off to the side. So yes, a V-Drive on a catamaran. It does happen apparently, occasionally. Leopard, uh, Leopard 58 was also used the same system. So, turn our attention here. You've got a huge cockpit area. You've got a massive uh, inset daybed uh, up, up there. Dive, uh, space for dive bottles here. And on the uh, back, you have uh, throttles for docking the boat. Uh, this is really the position you want to be in for docking the boat. Uh, the flybridge is mostly meant really for sailing. No fish tank. This one, this one doesn't have the fish tank, but uh, I guess the, uh, the owner isn't really a, a big fisherman. So, but it does have the uh, does have the grill. And these grills, I'm, I'm also told that one time I showed one of these, and the owner said, you know, these grills are so powerful, you can't even buy them in the states. I hope I hope they're. Uh, just hope they're not illegal. So, we'll go forward first. You've got uh, a foam non non skid decking here, and the side rails as well are all. There's no one by 19. This is all solid stainless. In fact, I think the owner even had it raised a couple inches just to accommodate his height. All right, forward. You've got a split trampoline with a. Uh, uh, gangway leading up to the uh, jib, jib furler and spinnaker. You've even got a rather, rather interesting solid steel stainless uh, bowsprit. It's actually, it's actually a folding bowsprit. You know, just so you can save a couple bucks on marina fees. And Royal Cape, they've been there still. In this boat, the tooling for it is actually quite new. It's only a couple years old, but uh, you know they're still quite conservative in some ways. So you've still got, you know, your baby stay that just makes this rig really indestructible. I mean, it's it's very beefy. And the owner has also added a uh, 
also when he was specking out the boat added a boom furler so it's a roller furling boom you've got storage up on here for your uh, chain as well as your tankage got a pair of four hatches that are enter those those are for ventilating the salon and beneath me is going to be the two forward staterooms that's why you have this sort of double decker arrangement here you've got a pair of really beefy shrouds off to the side but we can just sidestep them with no uh, trouble you've got actually a boarding ladder that folds down onto the side and uh, Royal Cape actually entered two boats into the show this year, so I guess they really they really think Miami has a lot of potential customers. This is the non-flybridge edition. Uh, yeah, this is the non-flybridge edition that has just the typical raised helm with the uh, hard bimini. Flybridge is only you know it's only about a half a million dollar option, but you know like man, you're buying a brand new Royal Cape, you know it's uh, might as well go for the gold. All right, we'll go on to the interior here. And another interesting thing to note about, you're fine, is that this boat, uh, the owner had a sliding, actually this is a sliding uh, uh, salon window. So it uh, allows you to fold out the window a bit more, sorry, a folding salon window as opposed to sliding. So allows you to fold out the window a bit more. Owner is quite a big cook, so we uh, expect a, a pretty big grill for this boat. Has, has, has a nice big cast iron skillet, likes to use. This boat has a huge G-shaped galley. Now an interesting thing to note about Royal Capes is that the interior may, you know, it looks uh, wooden, but actually it's completely synthetic. So it's very much maintenance free and it will virtually never rot. Uh, sometimes the interiors on these boats are, you know, kind of a bit more reflective. Uh, this one is, it's pretty, uh, it's basically just plain matte finish, you know, no reflectivity. I kind of, I kind of like this style of interior a bit more. Not a big fan of the reflective stuff, but it's a semi-custom, so I don't judge. And here you've got a washer-dryer combo as well. The owner actually didn't spec out an ice maker for this boat. Uh, he has one, but didn't think it was necessary for a dedicated one. So you've got a, actually you've got a dishwasher here and you've got storage for all your kitchen implements off to the side here. A dual basin sink with these uh, lifting yeah. countertops. Your oven and uh, another pair of fridge and freezer. This boat has a I, it's uh, has many cabins, but also has some other goodies like a pantry. So you got a pantry down here, and uh, man, you know you can store months worth of food in here. The uh, the wooden lattice sort of style of uh, thing that was another owner request. So it's it's not standard, but it can be done. This is the first aft stateroom. Man, in each cabin, it's just, it's huge. There's a lot of space in every, in uh, the aft cabins. The, uh, the other cabins are a little smaller, but this boat, I mean, everything about it is just huge. I mean, you've got, this is the, the aft cabin head. This, feel, this boat, it feels kind of just like a big floating beach house. Everything is very beachy. You feel like you're just on the seaside. <laughs> All right, you've got a study, uh, a midships here. The forward stateroom. This is, I, I believe this is the owner's suite actually, yes. So this is, this is the largest cabin in the, in the ship. You've got a, a pair of steps leading up to here. But even if you climb up here, even I don't touch the ceiling, so the headroom is really amazing. And here is the owner's head. 
Doesn't have a bathtub. Sometimes people actually put bathtubs in here. I've seen it done, but nope, just a typical shower. This will probably be the longest walkthrough video I'll have from the show, just because this boat is so darn huge. And there's so many things to say about it. I mean, every one of these is kind of like its own little work of art. There's only so many ways you can change things, but still, they're very accommodating, even for a semi-custom builder. So here's the second aft stateroom. And each cabin just has, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, huge, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten-ish, you know, storage compartments. So there's just a huge amount of storage in each cabin. And uh, yeah, these the the doors open outwards. Sorry. There's the two windows if you see on the side. And here you have a workshop slash sort of, uh, you know, tool storage area, part storage area. These are a utility room, as it's called. These are becoming uh, a bit more common even on production boats. Leopard, uh, it's a pretty popular option for Leopard, so a lot of South African boats actually have these. Got kind of a uh, kid's cabin tucked away amidships here. Again, just you know, tons of storage all over this boat. I mean, it's huge. It, I can't say that the boat sails like hugely well, but you know, it's not really designed for speed. We've also got a nice uh, slash ventilation hatch up there, slash escape hatch, I guess. And this is the final head on the boat. All right, we'll finish up on the flybridge. I told you this would be a long one, so. Uh, amazingly enough, I've somehow decided to do this all in one take. I don't know why, but I just have. So that's how this video is gonna be, because frankly, I have limited time. All right, so up on the flybridge here, you've got a, uh, got a small wet bar, seating all around the uh, science. In fact, you even have all. Um, you have a, that's boat. This oh, this boat has a lot of solar. There's actually a ton of solar uh, above me. But you've got just a small two. It has ten solar panels. Just two of them are off the end of the flybridge. The traveler is here. You also have a ladder for accessing the hard top should you need to. But given that it has a furling boom, uh, I'd hope there you wouldn't have any problems. And I'll just call your attention to the view. I mean, it is astounding. This has got to be the highest flybridge I think I've, I've ever been on. You know, relative to the boat size, you can just, you know, you can see everything. We got your helm station uh, here. All the lines are led back. Uh, well, virtually all of them, except for whatever that red one is. Must not be very important. The owner has gone with some BNG electronics, engine controls, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's also a full enclosure up here, so inclement weather, you just, you know, take these down, and you've got an Isenglass enclosure there. So, uh, yeah, that will wrap it up for the uh, Royal Cape Majestic 570 Flybridge Edition interested in this boat please check the full contact info in the video description uh, as always if you like the video leave a like if you dislike the video leave a dislike uh, leave a comment or leave your thoughts below and as usual thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one